Welcome to yet another Dustbreakers AMA. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Bernie Sue, the Chief Content Officer of Meta Theory and the team here. I am joined by Jason, Joshi, and Style Piggy, aka Julia, here on the AMA today. And we got a lot to talk about. We got um, uh, all sorts of new content you can see in the pinned tweet on the Twitter, if you're on Twitter. That we released a cinematic, uh, like literally half an hour ago, <laughs> which leads to a site, which you can check out if you want to. Uh, we also have a web comic uh, that that is, uh, issue or chapter four also dropped. That's not going where. Feel free to check that uh, as well. New lore coming out, new story slowly coming out, and then we got a lot of stuff to recap from NFT NYC and you know updated roadmaps and all sorts of stuff. So. Um, uh, Joshi, who usually takes tweaks more than this, is has uh, is a little under the weather, but uh, I'll let the co-host say hi. Jason, you first. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are excited to have you that are here today. D. Lou's, I'm sure, leading the charge on the questions front. So, uh, looking forward to all the fine questions. It's over to Joshi. Do he wants to say anything under the weather? Yeah, just uh, pointing out I'm a little lower energy and more sore throat than previous AMAs, so I'm happy to have Jason and Bernie and Julia with us this week. Go ahead and reintroduce yourself, Julia. Hi, I'm Julia, a.k.a. Style Piggy. Um, I usually don't join the AMA as a speaker, but a listener, but I'm happy to be here today as a speaker. Um, Yeah. You don't sound low energy to me, Joshi. I try. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason, where do you want us to start today? There's a lot. We can go a lot of places here. Let's start with the, the content side of things. If you want to jump into the uh, webcomic and the trailer, since those are uh, sort of your children. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, so, yeah, two pieces of content came out today. Um, you know, just uh, fast and furious, we can call it. So again, webcomic uh, chapter four is out, uh, Jolie's Journey. Uh, you can see the adventure brewing there. It's on the site. Uh, it's on Twitter. Uh, feel free to check it out. Um, we're, art is done by Gears and his team, uh, who's in the spaces, I'm assuming. He was here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but I, I know he was here earlier. So shout outs to him for the awesome work uh, that him and his team are putting together for this webcomic. And uh, I, well, one of the things we'll get to uh, that was mentioned in it when you talk to some of the holders at NFT NYC was that a lot of them you were really excited about getting more of the story told. So I'm um, glad we can do that with uh, this webcomic, for one, which uh, shows a little adventure on the dusk, uh, a couple breakers, dusk breaking, or so they say. Uh, so there's that. And then on the other side of things, there is, uh, other side, you know, uh, I guess in the video side of things is a new cinematic uh, when we work, when we've been working on it for a while, uh, it is definitely a well, quote unquote. We'll call it a teaser or a trailer, if you want to say. There is something that's teasing and trailing there, which we'll talk about more in a second. But one of the couple of the, couple of the lore things, story things that it does show is one: uh, the Kinshasa lift, the uh, iconic, uh, we'll call it vessel that takes you from uh, Earth to the dusk. And in this case, in the trail or in the teaser, it's the other way; it's taking you from the dusk to Earth. So there's that, a breaker uh, finishing a hard day's mission or mission's work on the dusk. And Sue the Scheduler, a character that you should be familiar with. If you've seen any of our uh, um, the any of our uh, other videos, our earlier videos, you can see that she is one of the uh, dusk tech drones that uh, is kind of guiding you on the missions and so forth. So she makes an appearance as well, a 3D version of her. Uh, kind of uh, coming, floating around, saying some things, being being a little um, amusing, hopefully. You find it amusing. So yeah, so two pieces of big content there, uh, and they both kind of tease something. There's an object in both of those uh, pieces of content that uh, kind of uh, alludes to something. So I'll, I'll throw it to the others to talk about that. Jason. Oh, boy. Let's get into it. Um <laughs> To start right at the top. So this is a teaser for uh, the upcoming collection. How about that? Uh, right off the bat. So this is uh, something that we're uh, teasing into the video um, without saying what it is or what it's going to lead to, just that it's um, something that we uh, wanted to put out there uh, and show 
you know, sort of this is like a story progress, our, our world progress and what we're coming to in this collection. Again, we've mentioned before that in the, in the preview of the upcoming collection, we're leading to a game asset eventually. Um, and so this is sort of the start of that trail. Um, we should see uh, a lot of this stuff start to come together here in the coming weeks. Um, for example, we've mentioned that there would be um, this drop um, and then, you know, the second collection drop, and then there would be a companion mini game. And there's some other things that we actually haven't mentioned that will be part of this uh, that are still, uh, I guess, you know, without, we, we don't want to spoil them because we'd like to, you know, see those smiling faces when you open your presents on Christmas. But um, uh, if you do, if Christmas is your sort of thing. Uh, but uh, this is then the start of our journey that will, uh, I think, take us for the next several months, um, beginning right here on uh, oh, June 30th, 2022. So um looking forward to seeing what people talk about it you know we like we love seeing people break down our our lore and discord uh particularly in the, in the general chat and people are always bandy about uh theories about the webcomic and now you have both a, a new webcomic and the trailer um to hold you over for uh, a few weeks as we you know get all our pieces in order and set the table uh for our second collection and then at the very end, I guess the one other thing I should mention, and I mentioned it in Discord, is that the, the video has a, a call to action at the end to go to a website called dustbreakers.gg slash Adrian. Um, who is Adrian? It's still a mystery. Uh, but what's on that page today uh, is, you know, a still uh, from this video plus uh, a sign-up form. And that sign-up form is us. Uh, we did put it there. Uh, it's to a new communications platform that we're going to try to use for um, an alternate means of updating, uh, communicating our updates to the community. So you'll be able to uh, get updates either as SMS, text, um, or email. Uh, in the future, we'll, uh, I should also be connecting uh, Instagram for DMs. So a few options there. There, There is the option in the tool as well, in this Lalo tool to use uh, Discord DMs, but Discord DMs are always such a um, <laughs> they're such a controversial thing, so we're not going to use Discord DMs, but we're going to uh, open up some other methods so that we can uh, reach out when we have major updates. This won't be a we're going to contact you daily, we're going to be you know, or, or maybe even weekly. It might be those those very big things that we want you to know, like hey, there's a window that you're going to act you were, you're going to want to act within, or we have a big update on something. That's what we'll use it for. So. Uh, a bit more sparingly than, say, Twitter and Discord, but well, we do want this alternate means of communication to stay in touch with everybody uh, a bit more directly and su hopefully successfully that we can see people are, are getting these and then uh, uh, coming to the website uh, or coming to Discord, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the kind of the big things today. Yep, the uh, webcomic and uh, cinematic, both showing some cool new stuff, but the... Uh, actual change of our Twitter banner earlier this week caught some of our breaker's eyes just because they hadn't, didn't realize the new key art uh, was ad added to the website a while ago. So that key art actually has the same teaser in it and really sharp uh, breakers may have noticed that Sue the Scheduler and other characters are holding things in that key art that we updated about a month ago. So that's fun. Yeah. Um, nice, nice work. <laughs> Everybody who's kind of those discerning eyes, uh, or intrepid, uh, sleuths. Um, so nice work there. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely been, uh, I mean, one of the kind of fun scrambles of the day was making sure to get both of these pieces of content out to you all. Uh, so we're really happy, uh, about all of that. Um, oh, and I want to say, oh, I want to say because, uh, because he's here and you can see him there, but uh, our very own uh, one of our founders, David Barthwell, put in a lot of extra time here lately on um, a bunch of things related to the website and design, um, and was able to, as we were getting down to the wire, to make sure that the you know this website was set up. We could have this new communication tool all set up uh, on our website, and there'll be more coming to this slash Adrian page in the near future. Uh, so big shout out to Dave for making sure that this all went down today. Yeah, shout out to David. Um, just to, again to reiterate that because it sounds like you're a little doing a little sizzling there, Jason. That uh, that this Adrian's uh, destination page is also what you're seeing there is a temporary. There's more information that it's coming there, so that'll be kind of like uh, our our place to uh, 
to reveal uh, more as we have it coming coming along. Um, all right, so that's on the content side. Actually, one more thing on the content side. So one thing that'll be coming aboard uh, as uh, again as you guys have been enjoying the comic, there will be a, a upcoming uh, contest related to the comic now. So what we're going to do is actually merge our um, uh, Mad Lib system into the comic and actually get a chance for one of you holders to put your breaker and one of your breakers into the comic in a future episode, a future issue. Um, this isn't a, you know, um, a choose your own thing where you all get to just put your individual. It's like, you know, there'll be a contest to determine who actually becomes a major character in the comic. So that'll be a bit of canonization something we've talked about as uh, a thing that we're doing in our story world where uh, you you get to be involved in the story um, that that becomes uh, part of it so that'll be an upcoming con- uh, contest uh, so keep your eyes out for that one it should be a fun thing where you know uh, you guys have those of you got to do the the mad libs one the contest as a fun little trial as a, as a test run uh, we'll now have you know a really really high stakes uh, a goal here that will affect a lot of a lot of narrative going uh, forward. So keep your eyes out for that. All right, and then going on to the next topic, uh, do we want to talk about uh, NFT NYC or what do you want to go to next, Jason? I'll, I'll let you call the ball here. Let's talk about um, before we get to NFT NYC. We can kind of come there in a second. What I wanted to get to was. Um, First, the, uh, we had promised to our holders, and I want to you know, be upfront about some of these things, a, a chance to play our mini game um, while it was still in development. And so for right now, um, I want to throw to Julius, the style piggy, to kind of talk a little bit about it, but I'll, I'll set up the framework. The framework here is uh, we don't have it ready quite yet. What we're trying to do is put it in the launcher, um, our launcher system, if you're uh, familiar with our, our previous games that we've uh, our team created a very secure um, launcher system so that you know we can put multiple games in it. Eventually, you, you know you can you, you can load them in. Uh, you you download the launcher, you install it on your computer, you play the games directly out of it. And so that's where we think it's ideally fit um, because most mostly because one is it's not really this this particular game is not uh, playable from web perspective uh, currently. So we're going to put it in the launcher, um, and in order to do that, we have to go through. Uh, some security checks and operational checks, uh, a little bit extra work there. And then Julio will take you through also what the team um, has been doing to uh, make sure the game is ready for public consumption. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Um, yeah, so on the mini game side, currently, we, as Jason said, we are fine-tuning the game, um, everything from adjusting the game balance, bug fixing, and you know, just even tweaking visuals like environment textures, lighting and shaders, making sure all these components, you know, come together nicely, cohesively. And in the style we want, um, we have an amazing art director from Sweden, Jonas, with tons of experience, game development experience. He's worked on big gaming franchises like Battlefield and Need for Speed. So he's at the helm of, you know, making sure all of that looks good. And internally, we're trying to, you know, trying to break the game, fixing any potential exploits. As Jason mentioned, security is our top priority right now. Um, making sure, you know, in since we're developing in Web3, security and community has always been at the forefront of how we're building and who we're building for. And, you hopefully you can see that once the game comes out. Um, yeah, and I kind of kind of just want to talk a little bit about our game devs, um, if that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, our game devs have been working together for years, um, so they do have the team synergy already in place. So it has made our development process really smooth. Our lead designer um, Maso, he's Actually, a legendary game maker in Taiwan. I don't even know if our if um, Joshi or Jason know this, but he's pretty legendary in Taiwan. He's done a thesis um, for his college thesis in 2004, where he made a flash game about the Taiwanese Robin Hood. That flash, that little flash game, became a huge hit um, during that era. 
if you like went into a computer class of a middle school or elementary school, you'll see that uh, the kids will be playing this game on on their computers. So that's really cool. Um, so fast f- fast forward like 15, 16 years, Maso and his team, they worked on a sequel and updated version of this Flash game, which is now available on Steam called Legend of Tianding, um, which, and you can see that it's like received overwhelmingly positive reviews. Um, and then fast forward and now coming into Meta Theory, their team, um, and then joining our team, which is like a global team, I'm pretty surprised how well they fit in with um, our U- the U.S. counterparts within Meta Theory. It's like a puzzle coming together. Um, Maso and his, and his teams, their work ethic is just impeccable. They're in, they in, inspire us. They inspire uh, Nick, who is our VP of game development. And then, in, you know, in response, you know, they're, they're also in, inspired by Nick's ph- philosophy of never compromising gameplay um, and features for time. So I... Looking how the game is developing right now, the quality of the gameplay, the game experience um, in this short amount of time is pretty amazing. Um, I'm sure like Bernie, Jason, and Josh can all speak to that because they've all play tested the game. So yeah, it's really coming together nicely on the game mini game part. Um, yeah. That's what I have to say about mini games. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I, I'll jump in and say um, just for people to know, like when you're when you're developing at speed uh, as we're as we're trying to get you know uh, our game to the market, um, this whole staff became uh, Julia Julia made sure to organize the whole staff into being uh, uh, beta testers here and uh, you know provide feedback. Uh, you know, took survey, made sure everybody was playing the game. Uh, make sure everybody was filing bugs and uh, and all that stuff so that we can actually, per, you know, not just test it in public, but test it in private first, um, you know, get some of that uh, feedback going for the team and then so get ready for the community to have the best product possible. So uh, Julia was uh, very instrumental in, in getting it, getting the quality really into the game that, that you should see when it when it drops here in a couple of weeks. Bernie, back to you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I second that. It just like you know, being being very very uh, objective with with you know uh, what the games we put out before, and the games we put out next. It's like this is a this is a a significant upgrade to the playing experience, the sophistication, the art, the gameplay of uh, this mini game. And so uh, because of that, and, I mean, I know this is, it's getting to the point where we just keep talking about it without releasing it, but. That we do want to do, make sure it's secure. Very important. We do want to know. We want to make sure the gameplay is is balanced, and of course, we'll adjust as we go. But this is not this is not your uh, rejiggered basic dustbreaker mini game that we that you guys are familiar with from the previous runs. So, um, so it's almost like I always I know I know it is technically it is a mini game, but it's like I feel it's like a mini plus or something like that. <laughs> like it's definitely bigger than. Uh, just a mini game here, and um, related to that, it's like just to kind of also reiterate the synergy that all of this comes together, where uh, the mini game is connected to the collection, which is also connected to story. I uh, and so you kind of well, once it all kind of comes together, you'll see the it, it all converge in like you'll see the connective tissue between the 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 uh, world of the game. The, the narrative of what we're telling right now on the other platforms and areas and, the, of course, the objects that are uh, the game assets uh, that are coming forward. So that's all um, very, very exciting. So, yeah, that's my uh, my thought on it. But I just want to just reiterate that it's it's really amazing to see uh, uh, the team that, that uh, Julia is helping to organize uh, over there on, on the Taiwan side to uh, executing at this high level. So very exciting. Um, and also, if you want to know about Legend of Tian Ding, uh, Meet D. Lu put the link in our AMA chat on Discord. So if you want to check it out, it's right there. Jason, back to you. Yeah, I just want to add to that. Um, you know, part of what we're setting up for the second collection is tied into the mini game. There's a couple of different things tied in here. Um, there will be points-based play uh, over a course of, of of a few weeks um, that will be that will help a you know 
determine the eventual end game asset uh, for this NFT. Um, so there will be some composability that we're, that we're introducing into our universe. So I think that's awesome from a technical side. We'll be doing composability. Um, uh, from the, another dimension is that there will be another play to mint. So in addition to those holders who will get um, a free claim plus the allow list of winners from the past, from our various contests and our various uh, partner, co-marketing partners, um, who will also be able to, then the, the, the allow list folks will uh, pay a small fee for, for the mints. Um, there will be a play to mint, and then we'll continue to grow this collection because, you know, one of the important things here, it is, as we mentioned, is a game asset. Um, our future game will be, we'll use these assets, and, uh, and then, you know, we, we expect this to be thousands, and then upon thousands, hopefully, you know, if, if we're successful in all the things that we do, this is going to be a, you know, a massive, uh, a massive game, a massive multiplayer game, lots of players. Um, and so we should see a lot of, um, you know, these assets in the future. But this is the, the early run, and we're designing the systems to make sure that the early folks uh, get a jump on it. And if you're here, you're early. Um, but early folks to get a jump on it, to, to work in the leveling system, and to be surprised and delighted when the uh, eventual uh, game and, and eventual asset is here. So that's my big picture sell on the uh, on the upcoming NFT collection. Cool. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Any questions if you guys have, feel free to just raise your hand on either Discord or Twitter. I'm happy to bring you up as we kind of ro- go through our topics. Um, but until then, uh, let's move on. Jason, we're going to go to... You call the ball. What do you want to go to next? Jump to um, NFT NYC so that you can, you and uh, definitely uh, Josh, if he's able to, to give some uh, feedback on the event. Sure. I'll set it up. Um, so, yeah, we went, we were, uh, Jason, Joshi, and I, uh, and others, we were at NFT NYC uh, last week. We were there for m- different levels of the conference. Most of us were there for basically the whole time. Uh, and, uh, it was, it was quite the event. It was, a, it was across a lot of the city or oh, a lot of Manhattan will say, um, yeah, I guess there were some events in like on some of the boroughs, but anyway, it was, it was not just the conference. It was like the, the events or the, the, the micro communities across the, across the, across the conference. It felt like every community had a, had a, had a, uh, was there represented. And we of course had a little, um, intimate event, uh, uh, for our, for our holders and our community as well. So it was really nice to, uh, kind of collect them all together into uh, one small area and have you know, it was really important to us to have conversations so you had different types of events at at nft nyc sometimes you had just had big parties with big djs and loud music and lots of alcohol and that's fine like if you're into that thing that's great <laughs> like no, and those can be amazing fun things to do uh no doubt and so but we were going to we wanted to have more of an intimate event where we wanted to actually meet and chat with the holders. You remember the last AMA we had, I was very excited about having a chance to actually talk to just some holders to, uh, directly and um, uh, and uh, talk about and what they're excited about and so forth. So uh, I think uh, we had about 40 uh, people total, I think. Uh, I took pictures. I, ironically, I did real-life NFTs, we'll call it. Well, real-life one-of-ones, the Polaroids, everybody. Uh, just as a memento for themselves and for us, if they didn't want to, didn't want their Polaroids, uh, and if they forgot them, we still have them. If you want them, you know, let me know. Uh, so a little fun event we had, and got a chance to just chat with uh, our, our our holders and seeing what they were excited about. So, uh, Joshi, I'll uh, let you uh, piggyback on anything you want to add there about the event. What'd you like about it? Sure. Uh, so yeah, I've been to hundreds, I guess, of uh, gaming and um, esports, you know, tournaments, gaming conventions, esports tournaments, E3s, PAXs, MLGs. So that's my, you know, BlizzCon, TwitchCon. Those have been my wheelhouse uh, for over a decade. And this was my first NFT or crypto convention I'd ever been to. So it was really interesting to see the differences. And NFT NYC did suffer a bit from... Uh, if you're, you know, watching just from social media from home, you probably saw various pictures of, oh, they have 1,100 speakers and, you know, only 
200 listeners or something uh, to that effect. So it did feel a little weird sometimes where it was like, oh, I know that guy. Like, he's not an expert on anything. Or uh, <laughs> it's like you're, you're hearing a lot of the same repeated themes. But this, these are the panels that the conference actually set up. And, you know, it's, you can't really, like, network with anyone while you're sitting in the audience listening to someone say, you know, something everyone in the room knows already. So it was a, maybe a little underwhelming as far as panels and um, gleaning anything from those, unless you were very new to NFTs, I think. Uh, there is, of course, an audience for that. But then industry people, as Bernie said, you know, there's tons of smaller community events like the ones that we set up. And I feel like, you know, there were hundreds of those too. So uh, every night, you know, there were uh, any hour of the day, you could choose between three different uh, sort of drop-in events. Or if you knew a guy, uh, or you held a, an NFT of a certain project, you, you would get into, you know, the more exclusive events with uh, food and drink. And then some went, you know, way over the top. Of course, you had Ape Fest and the Cool Cats did some really cool stuff. Uh, we, we ended up further away from the convention itself on Thursday night. And I saw Cool Man's Universe and Cool Cats like on the same street. Uh, basically the whole area was, was taken over every hour, like I mentioned. So it was very nice for me to um, network with some people that I'd only ever known online at our own, of our little drop in at Victor's cafe. We met like Slayer jewels and, uh, some partners, uh, some announced and some unannounced, uh, you know, uh, some, um, financial partners, some project partners. So, uh, meeting a lot of these people for the first time is great. I will continue to do that, uh, at future events. So that's, you know, my wheelhouse, and then uh, actually saw some esports, old esports friends are <laughs> surprisingly or unsurprisingly uh, also partnership managers at other projects. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, catch up and talk about this new industry with old friends. Uh, really, it is, you know, networking is, is why you go to a convention like this and to learn about new uh, products, things that you haven't tapped in on yet. So I took a lot of photos. Uh, the Marriott Marquis was kind of five floors of smaller booths, uh, really just a table each, um, <laughs> which, again, could have had some improvement from the conference proper, but uh, that's kind of here nor there. I took pictures of things like physical goods, uh, always catch my eye, you know, ways to display NFTs that you've already got or create, you know, 3D prints or plushies or toys or uh, since we are a video game company you know that's stuff that definitely draws my eye we want to have collectibles and uh fun stuff for uh our holders to have and play with uh at home even so that's that's uh, obviously social networks there's a dime a dozen now so finding the right ones you know is discord enough or should we go further specialized lalo is a, a new product right that jason's trying out now so uh, there are definitely you know many many offerings out there so i i kind of just you know, wrote two lines and took a picture of the ones that interest me the most, and we'll we'll check back with them. But there was some cool there's some cool stuff out there for sure uh, that was not on my radar. Uh, just having a drink with someone, you know, they told me about a couple of services we might make use of. So it is really cool just to see everybody in their element, know that everyone there is there for the same reason, the same as like gaming and esports events. It's really nice to just know that everyone is kind of on the same page. You don't have to explain blockchain to someone <laughs> when you start a conversation. So it was, it was kind of cool to be uh, in the thick of it. And uh, of course, when you're at any sort of industry gathering like that, you kind of get like the reignited passion and it's like, oh man, they're doing that and it did so well. We could totally do that or we could do that better, you know. So stuff, uh, stuff like that is really cool to see. And I'm glad I went, um, even though I'm a, a little ill now, uh, <laughs> uh, just the side effect, but we'll be back out at events, uh, rather soon. If we, uh, Jason want to talk about your experience before we move on to that. I'll go quickly just to say that, um, uh, you guys captured a lot of it, um, for us, I think in the, in the future, uh, I know you guys are going to talk about one event, uh, you and Bernie, but, um, you know, I think a, a, a part of who, what our DNA is, is game development, and making games. And so I think we're, we're better positioned, uh, from a certain standpoint to, uh, show our wares and build our community at, at gaming, uh, conventions and expos. And so I think that's where probably where we would focus. That was my sort of takeaway from, um, uh, being at this particular event, um, 
where it's very it was very much more on the lifestyle side of the nft world um you know for example the conference itself uh had tags for content and the tags were music fashion sports art but there was entertainment no game, there, entertainment but there but the gaming stuff was a little bit like um a little bit smaller and so it, they, there's still some shops to be built in that area or, or to represent gaming a little bit better so we'll we'll attempt to you know we we wanted bernie to get a, a speaking position there be, to tell our tell a story of how to build narrative around um an nft an nft uh, universe and so we're going to see some more of these opportunities and i'll segue now to say uh bernie talk about the upcoming nft expo verse Yes, actually. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll, we will be at NFT Expoverse, which is in LA at the Los Angeles at the end of uh, July. And I will be speaking, I think, on the Sunday, the 31st uh, panel there about um, uh, NFTs and and uh, gaming and, and story verses. So uh, please come check it out. I, Josh, you should be there and some of our LA folks, our local LA folks will be there as well. Uh, no other current event is planned at the moment. We will see if there is a, um, you know, we definitely, if you could do something formal or informal, like, you know, let us know in discord, if, uh, you're going to be around, uh, be lo- I'd love to meet, meet you, meet y'all and hang out uh, if you were in LA for NFT Expo verse, but uh, I will be speaking at it, uh, fun little event and, uh, can't wait to, to, to be there. So thanks. Cool. Um, so next we have... I believe roadmap or any questions you guys see that we should quickly hit before we move on. Jason, Joshi, Julia. I'm not seeing any notifications on anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want me to ask you questions? Oh, or? No, just seeing. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, missing yeah, a topic. Yeah. So no, oh, so, so okay. I can I can handle it. So, Go for it. Uh, so ro- roadmap wise. What we're looking at here, um, looking uh, looking ahead, and then this will be a good um, segue into questions. Uh, Road web wise, we're looking at a middle of July uh, possibility for this uh, the the, the oh I almost I almost named the game um, for the mini game um, to be available. Uh, again, the team is still making sure that the proper tests are done uh, to make sure that we can put it in the launcher and make it available. Um, and then by the end of July, we will be headed to this uh, play to mint period. Uh, so we'll be opening the play to mint period. And then around mid August will be the second collection drop. So the drop will be there over the course of a few weeks. Uh, we'll have a whole play system set up to earn points to essentially uh, upgrade or level up. Um, I've been internally calling it play to upgrade your um the second collection nft um and leading up to the uh, launch of our uh big you know full experience multiplayer skill-based game that, that'll be here in uh november so that's that's the rough timeline right now uh still white paper here later this uh um north america uh, north he- northern hemisphere summer so you know look for that in august ish time frame uh so that's kind of the roadmap for now we're going to make some changes to the website update our FAQ, update our uh, roadmap page, and then we'll let you know when those things drop in. So from there, I think that's a good time to drop into Q&A. All right. So remember, if you have any questions, feel free to just raise your hand. I'm happy to bring you up. I know we got some questions in the Discord, I believe. Right. There's a bunch of lore questions, Bernie, from Jasmine. Not sure how many you can answer. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh let's see what we can do. <laughs> so uh um wait, where where is this? Is in it's in chat? It's in the AMA chat. You'll have to scroll up just a little bit above where I said now we have a Discord event for tonight. Jasmine one red uh wrote quite a few lore questions. Uh do 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 Oh there you go. Um, okay, so Jasmine one red. Most humans are corruptible and power driven given the possibilities of technology. I would like to know more about Dr. Linda Way. What kind of person is she? What are her intentions towards humanity? What controls the technology? Who controls dust tech? What are their intentions? Wow, there's a lot here. It's a uh, lot, yeah. <laughs> I think okay. it's probably too detailed. Yeah, it's right a lot. <laughs> there's a lot that's that's look, all that will be um these are actually questions that a lot of these questions, not saying every one of these questions, but some of these questions are very familiar. 
uh, to me because they are being asked and answered by our team, our writing and lore team, uh, as we speak. So that is coming. We are going to cover most, if not all of these, it looks like. Uh, other ways the technology is used, uh, clothing gear, yep, covering that too. After the breakers exit the dust tech orb, how are they able to control the technologies? What exactly is the orb? Is it AI is learning? Yeah, these are things that uh, we are covering as well. Because about the ship. I mean, what's great about this is that, you know, um, one of the big pleasant surprises, uh, I found it surprising. I, I Maybe I shouldn't have, but maybe because for reasons. When I was talking to a lot of, the, lot of you uh, at the event I, I, and not uh, not identifying who I am and what I what I do for the team I was just kind of asking like hey what are you excited about like you you hear about what we're doing and and uh, you like games and stuff and and uh, a lot of you actually you know you said like we want more story to come out faster and uh, I know it's been slower than I'd like uh, and I know some of uh, all of us I think it's uh, the internally in our team i'll think it's it's slower than we all like um which is you know it's a lot lot to be building game building games is hard uh, a lot of resources and and so forth so you know not not calling anything out or specifically but um it was just really really refreshing and really exciting and reinvigorating to me to hear it's like knowing that we as a team have all the story built up uh lore design backstory that's just you know that that, that currently is being uh put in a basically a wiki <laughs> and and we want to deploy it and we're not going to just you know we can't, we can't just release the wiki that's just not a good way to present story so having things like the teasers and the comics and other things that we are starting to cook up uh as we go forward is really exciting so all of this stuff jasmine one read uh is is coming i mean yeah like i would say you you have like 30 questions in this one discord piece uh which is great and um, I'm pretty confident to say that 75% of these are going to be you know, things that we have either discussed or and answered or uh, are currently discussing. So um, good stuff there. Uh, cool. There you go, Joshi. <laughs> All right. I'll skip to one more just lore-related question while we're on the topic. Um, Dilu does note that in... Our website on the Machafuko lore page, it says there are five districts in Machafuko. And now our teaser today did say the words Shadow District. Is that a recognized district, one of the five, or is that something else? Uh, yes, that is one of the five. <laughs> so, Roger. Yes. Got it. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll say, I'll say that. Uh, he he had a heart reaction here on Twitter Spaces. So, <laughs> so uh, and uh, obviously, if we're going to call it out, it is relevant to a lot of things that we're building towards. So I'll say that. So um, there's a reason why we 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 were deliberately calling out this district for this reason in this moment. So um, and uh, so yeah, very excited to reveal to reveal more. Cool. Um, let's see what else we got. Here's a, yeah, another question from Mikhail Kim, uh, says, hello, not much going on these two weeks. So just a couple of questions. One, how many chapters do you plan to do in your comic? Will you continue to be so productive and post one chapter every one week or two or slow down later on? Uh, and then two, how do you choose breakers to mention in your comic, which you did, uh, you can speak again toward. Sure. And finally, is there anything community can help you with? So I'll answer that at the end, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mikhail, uh, I see you actually are on Discord too, wrestling right now, or you were. Um, so uh, great question. I, how many chapters? So let me let me kind of do a broader. So there will probably be, there will probably always be comics. As in, I'm not saying there's always going to be one publishing, but right now we're in the story of Jolie's journey, which is one it's a breaker named Jolie. She's a breaker that is, I believe, if I remember correctly, 1136. Uh, she is in the Dust Tech Treasury, and she's interacting with another breaker, which is Nova, which is 837, also in Dust Tech Treasury. And as you mentioned, she's already interacted with two breakers that are not in the Treasury, that are owned by community members. Um, I, I believe uh, Eddie has Eddie, of course. I don't know who has Kane specifically. Um, 
uh, but anyway, one of you guys have Kane. We don't have Kane, and so you can see that that he that he was in uh, comic three. Uh, so we will continue to bring in more breakers. So the process is that we have to canonize them first through our contests or whatever mechanisms that we start deploying for canonization. Uh, and then we'll put them in the comic. Doesn't mean that every canonized breaker will appear in this comic with Jolie's story, but the idea is that you know if you're going to canonize a breaker, you got to use the you got to use it right. Like you can't just say they're canon. That's not that fun. Uh, if if you're going to canonize you as a Jedi, you got to interact with the other Jedi's to be part of the story, right? So that's that's the example there. So we're, we're it's a process. It's not like. You know, the idea of just saying there, I think there are like eight or ten canonized breakers. We're not going to just put all eight or ten of them in one comic book, comic uh, chapter and say, here you guys are and then go away. We're trying to make it sure that they're all served in a way where they get they get a moment, if not more. So uh, also just because you already saw Eddie and Kane uh, doesn't mean that that's all you're going to see of them. You're going to they're, they're characters. They're they're real. They're people in a world. They're not just. Uh, window dressing uh, where they're just there so know that as well now to your question about the pro- uh, releases and the productivity of it yeah so right now i'll admit like, like we, we, we were being ambitious with this kind of weekly release we have not hit that weekly release uh so but we like you said we've kind of hit this one to two week every every uh, uh release and it looks like we'll have more details of that later that we will continue with that for now um the big reason for that is not just because uh we we want to keep uh we do want to keep telling a story but we actually need to keep telling story at speed to make sure to keep up with everything else we're doing so as we release the mini game as the collection comes out like these are all supported and informed by the nar- the main narrative or a narrative that's been presented uh in this uh run of the comic uh Jolie's journey so you're seeing that you're seeing the pieces of it. And so what you're seeing, at least so far in the four issues by design is you're kind of seeing like the, you know, what is it like to actually be a dust breaker, right? You're seeing going through the orb, you're seeing going up the elevator, you're seeing first mission on the dusk, you're seeing them uh, in this issue an encounter with the gribble and exploring. So you're getting little pieces of all of that coming forward as we get to more of the, the deeper character drama stuff that's coming out. So, uh, we need to keep doing that because otherwise all you're going to, if you take away the comic and um, it's it's harder to get a lot of story and narrative together without just doing a big text dump, which we which we really just don't want to do. So uh, is the comic all we're going to do? Absolutely not. There's another mechanism that's coming out in a few weeks with the collection uh, drop, right? That is not a comic. That's something else, which I will... I'm being deliberately vague of, uh, but I think it's uh, I'm really excited about. It. The team is very excited about. It. We're, it's a system that we're building. It is interactive. Okay, so just know that there's another system we're building there to deploy more narrative and lore uh, with that. So that's coming as well. And if you're asking for community help, I mean, look, uh, I'm being a, being a part of it. This Mad Libs contest coming out for the for to get your breaker in there. That's direct. Get your breaker in that contest. You're going to be able to actually design a little bit of the of of uh, how put if how that breaker if it wins gets to be interactive with the comic and if you actually have um i don't know i guess uh i guess artists we're always looking for artists so if you have any uh artists uh that that you recommend whether it be for anything we're always looking for artists so there you go <laughs> that's I like how, how you know. yeah i like how your mind went to please make more art for us because <laughs> i was gonna point out um you know there's no shortage of stories to tell, right? You can write words a lot faster than you can illustrate <laughs> panels and videos. So uh, we, we thankfully do have a, a wealth of material to work with. And even things like the uh, the floating face shield and the nanite um, face canals that we did some social posts for uh, in the last few weeks, just the explaining traits of the collection that we already have and the hunter drone uh, somewhat recently, like these are more even smaller things, you know, static images with text that we're able to uh, present some of the story. So um, <laughs> things that you can do to help the community from my perspective are uh, sharing the cool stuff, right? Like the webcomic and the trailer and our discord, you know, tell your friends, 
literally that's word of mouth is something that many companies just pay for, right, with uh, marketing spend. So if you are actually hype about the project and how creative it is and how, you know, you get to be a part of it and uh, you're in other discords or other projects, you know, you've got friends who buy NFTs that may have never heard of us. So uh, even a YouTube video like Cryptus uh, in Russia made, uh, once we got our funding announcement, that brought in tons of new eyeballs. So even if you've got you know a small audience or a large one, um, just sharing and, and helping spread the word while we continue to do these smaller announcements before we break open our own piggy bank, uh, little things like that help. And then, of course, yeah, actually uh, participating in things like the Classic Mode Contest last week. Uh, that ended last week, excuse me, we were in New York last week, uh, but the next one coming up and the minigame testing, of course, will definitely be vital as you all have uh, machines and setups that we can't account for. So we want to be able to provide the best gaming experiences once we're in the groove uh, with the minigame, early access, et cetera. Uh, feedback will be definitely very important. So lots of stuff to do. Uh, basically, just tell everyone how cool we are for the time being and I'll be happy. <laughs> Awesome. Next question. What do you got, Josh? Uh, I see uh, D. Lou, very good with the questions as usual, uh, asks a, a different sort of question. What are some of the biggest hurdles right now? Is it tech-related, security, personnel? And I'll even add the question mark, bear market. <laughs> uh, maybe Jason uh, would want to answer, or, or Bernie, a, if you've got. I want Jason to answer that question. And actually, I want Julia to answer that question <laughs> after that, so go for it. Jason, or- is Jason here? I was here. I'm just. Uh, I was. I was typing a message to Kevin. So I'm on my. As you know, Spaces is on the phone mainly, <laughs> and, and I'm doing. I'm multitasking. Um, yeah, the bear market. Um, a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but really, uh, you know, but really, this is. You know, you fall back on what what you know in a general sense, and so what we know is um, making games, uh, making great art. Uh, making great story, um, and con- continue to, to deliver that. Among, you know, even within this market, you know, we may um, we may thoughtfully adjust timing of things. You know, uh, we should. You know, we need to be wary of um, uh, of what the market is 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 doing and, and how people are reacting to it. And um, you know, more particularly to the NFTs and the market of NFTs. But at the same time, uh, you know, what we're going to keep doing is, uh, is put our head down and keep making the best games that we can. Um, keep working on that type of thing, uh, and you know, control the things that you can control, right? Uh, and so, in our case, that we're uh, we're going to continue to deliver the story that we've been delivering. Um, everyone's still, you know, working. We're hiring still, trying to again build a, a game company, which on its which on its own market or you know, bear bull market or not, is, is a hard undertaking. And uh, you know, we just if we can just focus on building a great game, uh, you know, markets rebound. There's everything cyclical. Um, it's not the end of the world and, and we can, uh, deliver the right experience, um, at the right price, um, and, or value, uh, to the people playing and and engaging in our, in our world. And we're always thinking about what that could, can mean, um, in a variety of different ways. Um, and I know from looking at what was going on in, uh, New York, for example, a lot of value was in people being able to go to live events and, and that's, that's good utility. It's a certain level of utility. Um, you know, we certainly want to be able to deliver a lot of different experiences, uh, notably digital and then, you know, and digital meaning games, digital meaning again, our, our art and other, uh, design related, lore related content related, um, you know, experiences. And then we'll, you know, focus a little bit later on these, um, other types of experiences in, in person, merch, uh, down the road when, you know, we feel that it's a maybe a better time for some of, to spend on some of those things versus right now. I think we're looking forward to getting to um, uh, our our big title in the fall and really you know putting some money behind getting people to be aware of the game uh, that we're that we're making. So fair market, fair market. Uh, Julia, what has been the most uh, challenging for you on your side of things? Hurdles. Well, <laughs> that's funny. I'm sorry. Um, just like in general, though, um, I feel like one thing that we've um, talked about earlier is security. 
Um, that's, I think that's a, I don't, don't want to say hurdle, but that is something that we're not taking lightly. Um, we're not going to, going to take any shortcuts on that, not going to take any compromises just because in the space we're in, it's very, very important that we keep everybody safe. We keep our game and data safe. We don't want people exploiting the game. So I don't know. I don't know if you count that as hurdles. Um, a challenge. It's a thousand, it's a thousand percent. Uh, it's, it's something that's very important, right? Yes, I agree. Yeah. You know, and, and seeing that, um, seeing you know, all these, these other, other groups get, you know, basically hacked or whatever, well, compromise, we'll say that, just compromise, right? Uh, it's It's like... It's scary, right? And so we want to make sure that that's the case. And so the security is is uh, one of the most important things for our team. Uh, and you know, part of it is is like like the the, the humor of it is the, the amount of us that have been kind of you know uh, locked out of our own our own accounts uh, because of security keys, which is good, right? But like, okay, we know it's working, <laughs> so like we know we know we're being extra secure of our own things. So uh, yeah, definitely for sure. Um, I, I, and then I guess I'll answer, uh, from my, from us. It's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the things, you know, personnel, security, tech, bear market, uh, quickly on the bear market. One of the things that I think that, you know, no one wants a bear market. Okay. Like it, it, it's, it sucks. You know, it's, it's, it, everybody's, people are getting hit, uh, for sure. And there's no, by no means do we want a bear market. Uh, but the, you gotta, you gotta, you know, take roll with the punch and, you know, do you play with a hand, hand you're dealt. So. The good thing is that the fortunate thing is that you know we did close our, our our round, so we do have the resources to go for a while. Now, if this is a catastrophic thing, who knows? Okay, that's a lot, a lot more problems than that. But we we are we are built to weather, and we are built to go and build. So it's like even though there is a bear market, we you know, we are building. We have the resources. We are assembling teams. There are uh, more team members being added uh, next month. Uh, that I I'm. I'm told that we are very excited about. I've you know met a couple of them, uh, and when they come aboard, like you know you're going to see them the ac- acceleration, right? So like you see like the acceleration that that Jonas has given us, the acceleration that Maso's team has given us. Like we didn't have either of them three months ago, I think uh, February. Yeah, we didn't have them four months ago. We'll say that. And so having them now has really really been game changers for us as far as our output, what I've deployed. Um, uh, you know, having new artists, seeing that come out. So it's just like, these are things that are definitely very exciting uh, for us as well. And then I think the last thing I'll say is that we're very ambitious. <laughs> like, like uh, we're building multiple games, multiple content plays. Uh, there's a lot going on. I'm not saying that we're doing more than any other Pacific teams uh, that they're doing, but we're doing a lot. Uh, and just like seeing and and communicating between those teams has been uh, very very uh, challenging, but necessary. So I'll say that. Yeah, uh, just adding on, and this kind of you know it's a challenge. Back to that question as well. Uh, but we've grown a lot, as Bernie just pointed out, in just a few months, which. Uh, a lot of NFT projects don't grow ever. They only lose people. <laughs> We've gone from you know less than ten people to over forty five now. Uh, it's it's pretty good pacing, I think. And um, even though the output, you know, you're not playing in a new mini game just yet. You know, it's just out of reach for the holders for a moment, but it's it's going to be on a whole new level, and that's really cool. That's the challenge. That again, I'd like to remind everyone that we're doing a lot of. Th- processes and hiring for the first time and won't need to do a lot of this stuff again the second time or we'll already have it figured out you know much faster for the the next iteration so uh, the fact that we have now you know more content produced whether it's used or sees the light of day or not uh, every week that we advance is less work you know overall to be done still we're still building meta theory inc the company <laughs> and putting processes in place for, for a whole business. And, and it's not just, you know, an artist and a, his buddy who knows how to use Twitter. So uh, that feels really cool to me every day, still having, you know, meetings with artists and video guys and uh, sci-fi specialists. And, you know, we've just got the, the whole gamut here. And one new hire that I did mention earlier in discord this week was Aaron 
uh, who is just helping. He's a digital content editor, and you know I know how to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro, but it's good to have a pro aboard because it just saves so much time and effort. And now uh, it's just opened our pipeline for even social media content uh, so much wider for the future that even, you know, one, one head count can make a, a massive difference. And we're bringing on a bunch. We're still hiring a bunch. You can see the careers page on duskbreakers.gg as well, uh, under about careers. So do, uh, check those out as well. If you've got any kind of special skill you can lend us. I'll add, let me have one more thing and then we can move from this part of the subject. But I would say that one of the, uh, interesting parts about where we are in the market right now is, we're, I think, you know, you would, you could almost call us like second generation in, in the Web3, which is interesting to say it's, it's so new, but um, we, you, there's a lot of examples to learn from uh, right now. And I think it's helping us um, kind of make sure that, you know, the things that we're writing, the things that we want to build, uh, we're going to build the right way. Um, a lot of examples, ahead, you know, in, in their economies and in their, um, and how their, you know, their games are designed. Uh, and if you get my drift on like how those things ha- have been going, there's there's enough notable stories out there to know like oh, okay, we should probably not do that. We should definitely not do that. And uh, so let's make sure we get this stuff right because we're trying to do again something for a long term uh, and not just some short term place. So we continue to hire, continue to, to strategize and build our our whole business, you know, from the ground up the the right way and, and use all the lessons we can from. Uh, our friends, advisors, and then uh, other other stories in the news. That's pretty much the last question from Discord. So, uh, unless we got any live ones out there, we can. You got any live ones? Live D-Loo, questions. Go... No, no live D Lou questions. Calling for live questions again. Discord or Twitter. Feel free to just raise your hand if you have something you wanna you wanna ask or say. Hopefully, it's pleasant <laughs> if not <laughs> uh but uh feel free to do that otherwise we are basically past the hour so we can start wrapping this baby up um so i'm just gonna do a three two not okay cool um awesome so uh you wait you cool to wrap up right guys <laughs> is there any other lingering questions or thoughts no I don't think I had anything additional. Read the comic. So let's summarize. What did we talk about today? Uh, In order, as you can see here in the the pinned tweet, we got a new cinematic teaser out there. It's uh, it's called Payday. It's it's, uh, set on the Kinshasa lift. Something uh, very cool looking. Uh, 3D team, our vision team in Taiwan put that together visually. Whole whole new look. It's awesome. It's got a breaker. It's got Sue the schedule. It's got a tease. It teases uh, the 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 new collection. So check that out. There's a call to action to a website there uh, on our website, a webpage on our website. Yes, it's a sign up right now. Uh, more information to come at that site. So that is not going to be what it's always going to be. Just know that we we wanted to get this out for you all, so you can check it out. And so there's that, the cinematic. Check it out. Enjoy. Like, retweet, YouTube, subscribe, all the good things. And then we have the new issue of the webcomic, issue four, drawn by Gears and team. Uh, that's over on the website. Four issues, all for you to read. They are telling one story. They're telling you the story about being a dustbreaker. Go check that out. That issue also teases the new collection in its own way, too. Look at that synergy. Uh, so go ahead and check that out as well. We also talked about NFT NYC in our event uh, that we had there, meeting some of your community members, all fun, good good stuff. We have myself and Joshi and more going to be at NFT Expoverse in LA at the end of July. We talked about the mini game. Julia dropped some knowledge about the, the complexities of this great team, putting together this awesome mini game, connected to the new collection and then we also talked about the roadmap, the new roadmap. We got a mini game coming uh, uh, mid July for holders to test out. Uh, play to mint at the end of July. The mint uh, of the new collection in mid August, and uh, upgrading this, which will which will then the game will upgrade the collection asset, uh, the new collection. You will we synergize with the game to upgrade the asset. For that to play in the big game coming in the late fall. Uh, so there's that. We are weathering the bear market. Uh, and that's where we made a bunch of adjustments. And then I... Oh, I think that's it. 
<laughs> so, um, right. Oh, yes. And then there is going to be a new contest coming in the next few days to get your breaker into the comic. Uh, major character opening it up. Uh, I've already already designed the the uh, at least the placement for that character, uh, who the character is, what their name is, all that stuff. That's going to be up to you guys. That's going to be part of the contest. I'm super excited for it. It's going to be super chaotic. I love it. That's uh, that, that's what we do here. Uh, and I think that's basically it, right? Did I cover everything? Squad? You did a great job, Bernie. Oh, I'm, yes, sir. I'm hyped. All right. So that's it for this edition of the AMA for Julia, Joshi, Jason, and myself. I'm Bernie. Uh, be sure to follow us on YouTube. If you're not listening on YouTube on this already, subscribe, like, all this stuff. And we'll see you next time uh, on the AMA in two weeks. And uh, enjoy your 4th of July holiday if you're in the, if you're in the Americas. Um, and we'll see you guys on Discord as well. So thank you, everybody, and have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.